Welcome back. Well, yes, it's the, uh, the trafficking reports, the World Anti-Trafficking Day. Does that some of the issues we'll start off with this morning. And we've got the Director General of NAPTIP, Dr. Julie Okadnoli, joining us this morning from Abuja. Good morning and thank you for joining us today. Well, it is indeed a challenging task. Yeah, it's a challenging one that, uh, well, not just Nigeria, globally, that we're trying to grapple with because, I mean, looking at the figures, it is a huge industry that, uh, unfortunately, it is the case. But in your assessment of how we're proceeding with this, how are we faring? Well, I think so far so good. Um, a lot of Nigerians are becoming more aware of the dangers of human trafficking and the signs of trafficking. Um, yes, of course, you cannot um, stop some people from still trying, you know, to, you know, travel out of Nigeria for so-called greener pastures because um, this fight is a fight that is meant for the whole of government and the whole of society. So, I mean, it, some communities still do not understand what trafficking is. And then each and every one of us have a role to play. And we must play our, our roles to ensure that we bring um, the crime of human trafficking to the barest minimum at the least. Uh -huh. But if you look at some of the reports, I know that the, the U.S. State Department did release what they refer to as the 2020 Trafficking in Persons Report. And Nigeria, we were on tier two watch list. And that meant that we didn't meet the minimum standards, which is making significant efforts to be in compliance. So did you, what are we missing in that regard? Well, honestly, I'm not going to lose sleep about this report because it's very curious in the sense that the destination countries who are the beneficiaries of human trafficking are mainly on tier one and tier two. We are the victims here. Most of our girls and boys are trafficked there. Taxes are collected from them. They are forced into prostitution. Their organs are taken off them. They are forced into uh, domestic servitude and all of that. I've, I've made it clear um, times without number, and I've said to them, I do not understand how America can be on tier one. They don't even have an agency that fights human trafficking. Nigeria has a whole agency fighting human trafficking. In America, it's left to the NGOs. And how can they be on tier one? The crime of human trafficking is worse in America than even in Nigeria. So I don't even know the criteria. Now they bring in other, for, other, other uh, factors like, oh, the military, um, the this, the that. I'm like, I have nothing to do with the military. Human trafficking has nothing to do with the military. Where does the military come in here? They keep bringing in the military as an excuse. Oh, the military, they use child soldiers. The military, they do this. They arrest young people and all of that. I say, if you want to talk about of human human trafficking. There's a protocol. We have the Palermo protocol. We are all signatories to that protocol. Why don't you define human trafficking the way the Palermo protocol has defined human trafficking? Why are you bringing in extraneous matters in, 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 in rating Nigeria? As far as I'm concerned, Nigeria should be on tier one. But uh, what you, when you say you don't have much regard for that report, I mean, one can understand your patriotism, but uh, talking about the fact that uh, Nigeria is a victim, well, perhaps that might also be right. But what do you say to the fact that when uh, these humans are trafficked to these countries that you talked about, there is a collaboration between Nigerians in those countries and the nationals of those countries and perhaps others? Isn't that something to consider? Absolutely. It has nothing to do with my being patriotic. It's just a, um, a, fa a statement of fact. Um, I'll give you a simple example. For example, I know that without the nationals of the destination countries, human trafficking will not thrive. But I tell you that most of the time they ask us to prosecute our own. They give us information concerning the Nigerians you know, who are into trafficking. And I ask a simple question. 
How about the citizens of your country who are collaborating and cooperating with this and partnering with these Nigerians who are into trafficking and they tell you, oh, sorry, it's only the Nigerians. Absolutely impossible. So as long as they are not prosecuting theirs and we are prosecuting ours, honestly, to just be an exercise in futility. And I know that we've done so much in terms of trying to prosecute Nigerian uh, uh, traffickers. But I mean, I, I, don't, I don't see that happen in most of the destination countries. They make it appear as though it's a Nigerian problem. But I tell you that it's a global problem and we must attack it globally. Well, when you say that you don't have, uh, you don't want to pitch this against the military in any way, well, that might also be understandable. But there are domestic reports that also say that security officers or people in authority at especially IDP camps, uh, they, they, they take advantage of these people for one reason or another, uh, sex trafficking, uh, labor uh, trafficking and all of that. Are you aware of that and what is being done about it? That is very possible. And the truth is that if the cases are not reported, and for example, we have a NAPTIP officers in the IDP camps because we have a zonal command in Meduguri. So we have NAPTIP, NAPTIP officers who go there to carry out sensitization campaigns, who go there to carry out investigations, counseling, and so on and so forth. And if the people do not tell us that these guys are responsible for all sorts of atrocities in the camps, like rape and all of those things we hear, there's absolutely nothing we can do. We cannot manufacture evidence against anyone. But if anybody is reported to NAPTIP and NAPTIP does not act, then that will be a problem. But I tell you that no, no report report has been given to us that we haven't taken any actions on. Mm. You know, part of that report also said that uh, we didn't provide evidence of our increasing efforts to combat uh, severe forms of trafficking, which uh, one needs to find out. What are we doing about documentation, stepping up some of these things? Because yes, it is a challenge. In fact, uh, even cases such as rape, compiling details, addressing some of those issues. We have challenges with some documentation. What are we doing? How are we improving or addressing those gaps that we've got? I can tell you for free that we gave them all the necessary documents they required and we are up to date in our reports. And I can tell you too that even the Americans are not up to date with their, with their trafficking reports. Let them produce their last trafficking report. The last report that they have was like maybe some five, six, seven years ago. So if they produce their latest re report, I will produce my latest report and tell you that we are even more up to date in terms of reporting. Mm. Now, in terms of the awareness, ensuring that people understand what trafficking, what they could mean, moving people from different areas, how would you say uh, we've made, what kind of impact have we made in different areas, different states, people who do things thinking that they were helping people and not knowing that, look, this is actually not the way to go about it. Has the awareness grown? How do we find that regard? Yeah, the awareness has grown thanks to the social media, Nigerians are social media savvy. Um, we carry a, lo a lot of awareness on the social media through sh very short clips. We have um, some state task forces on um, human, um, human trafficking, and that is really working. Um, COVID came and um, slowed us down really well because um, by now we ought to have established uh, anti-human trafficking task forces in about nine states. Uh, but that has not um, deterred those we're going to be moving as quickly as possible because when you have the anti-human trafficking task forces it makes coordination between the states and the federal government a lot easier um, the state government has a role to play a huge role to play and they need to ensure that for starters um, education is free and compulsory they need to empower the women, the mothers of these people. You know, there's so much that the state government has to do. The federal government cannot do this alone. We have NGOs, we have CSOs, we also have the media. Everyone has a role to play in carrying out sensitization and education. Education is a huge problem. Most of those who are trafficked are not really educated. Then we have the issue of ignorance as well. And of course, poverty has a role to play on the part of the family members. Now, when I started out initially talking about the, the volume, you know, the challenge that we face globally, uh, looking at some reports which indicated that, um, well, the human trafficking, it's a form of modern day slavery, but it involves 
uh, this is a commercial gain which they estimated, according to the UN report, saying it's a $150 billion global industry. And then there you go, some of the other figures that the reasons why some persons just stick their neck on this one. When you speak about states, the NGOs, the role that they have to perform, we, how would you say that, um, I mean, in terms of provision of getting them stable, economically speaking, because it's one thing to bring them back to the country, but we need to engage them, else we'll be making it a lot more difficult. Do we have framework and structures now such that whoever, whatever we do when we get them back, do we properly engage? What have you noticed in that regard now? What do we need to do differently? Well, I would speak for NAPTIP. I cannot really speak for the states um, because they also have a role to play in terms of rehabilitation and empowerment of the victims. Um, when these um, uh, victims are returned, we ensure that they are counseled, they are given medical treatment, they are rehabilitated, they learn a skill or two, or those who want to go back to school also go back to school to get a formal education. As soon as they are done, we partner with IOM to ensure that they are empowered. And almost all of them that have come back have been empowered. But for those who are rescued by their various states, I really can't speak for them. I really don't know how they empower them. And they, they ought to empower them because there is a protocol. There is a protocol for sheltering, rehabilitation, empowerment, and reunification. And I hope and believe that the states are doing that. Does that suggest that they've not been coordinating with NAPTIP? Well, some of the states have been coordinating with NAPTIP, and that's the importance of having the Anti-Human Trafficking Task Force, because um, the chair of the task force is the Attorney General of the state. The co-chair is the Zonal Commander of NAPTIP. So yes, for those states that have Anti-Human Trafficking Task Forces, I know we have very serious um, synergy and cooperation going on. We know what they are doing. But for those states that don't have these Anti-Human Trafficking Task Forces, we've heard little or nothing from most of them. That is why we want to quickly set up anti-human trafficking task forces so we can have a very um, free and easy flow of communication and synergy between the state and the federal government. Well, I'm looking at a, a, a number of um, what is supposed to be deterrence you know, on your website, especially concerning the enforcement of the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act. And one of the uh, punishments, if we can call it that, is um, violence by state actors. Uh, it's imprisonment not exceeding four years or a fine not exceeding 1,000 Naira. Compared to political violence, imprisonment not exceeding four years or a fine of 500,000 Naira. Violence by state actors, 1,000 Naira fine. Political violence, 500,000 Naira fine. Both are bad. But would you, do you see this as being you know, efficient enough to, to deter people? Because, I mean, if it is easy to pay all of these, how is this law going to be enforced? Violence against persons don't happen. Absolutely not. It's not good at all. It's inadequate, and um, we're working towards amending the law, and we hope that very soon it will be amended. There's so much to amend. We didn't write the laws, uh, and so we hope that um, they will be amended. Could you tell us a little bit about what's happening? How, because we understand that uh, NAPTIP is in charge of the National Register for some of it, for rape cases. There's been a lot of effort on the part of state government. They talk about activating the necessary laws to see what we can do to stem this completely or reduce the barest minimum. What's going on in that regard? Yeah, it's called the Nigeria Sexual Offenders Register, domiciled in NAPTIP. The idea is to name and shame sexual offenders. No sexual offender will want to be named and shamed. I think it will serve as a serious deterrence to um, sexual offenders. And um, we're, we're, we're on, on it, and we're hoping to... Um, 
share information with other law enforcement agencies and other partners as well um, so that we can have a comprehensive sexual offenders register that is up to date. We have a platform already and we are still, we are still enlightening people to tell them the importance of sharing information. It's not good enough for everyone to be talking, you know, you know from, all, um, from different angles. Um, police will tell you, oh, we've prosecuted for one million. Um, someone else will tell you two million and then nobody knows about it. So it's good for us to work together and share this information. We had a meeting a few weeks ago and I hope going forward we'll be sharing information so we can give you an accurate figure of actual sexual offenders. I know Ekiti State have their own sexual offenders register as well and the published names, which is a very good thing. But we need to all come together to share this information so we'll be more in a more coordinated uh, manner. All right, so we do thank you and uh, we hope that well, whatever it is that uh, can be done, will always, the media, I suggest, well, at least we will always be here to lend a voice and ensure society gets all of these rights. We thank you for coming on and we wish you all the best.